Our presentation uh, testing Kubernetes cluster and VNFs in telco staging environment. Uh, I'm Kentaro Ogawa, research engineer from NTT R&D, and all oh, my colleague oh, Hiram Asahina, uh, he's the most oh, skillful engineer related to uh, combining the open infra, uh, uh, open stack infra, and Kubernetes infra with GitOps in current NTT. So, uh, NTT is the uh, uh, Japanese uh, biggest and oldest telco in, uh, in short, or the uh, Japanese uh, version of AT&T, uh, actually. Yeah. And uh, our mission is, uh, at NTT is to uh, contribute to open source uh, that may help us in the future and to propose the use of open uh, source to other department or doing real business in our company, uh, like the uh, development team of the uh, 5GC. And uh, for the last two years, uh, uh, we have worked for the OpenStack Taka project to introduce uh, Kubernetes uh, into Telco and or help migration from OpenStack-based VM uh, to Kubernetes-based containers. However, uh, now Kubernetes has become quite common, uh, so uh, my important thing is not uh, using Kubernetes, but uh, how Kubernetes is used. Uh, so we think uh, GitOps uh, provides a good answer to this question. So now we focus on, on proposing GitOps to our uh, 5G development department. Uh, but since our system uh, uh, still has legacy parts and we uh, cannot change everything at once, uh, so after internal interviews, we uh, decided that uh, the staging environment would be our first target. So if we uh, succeed or uh, in changing our staging environment, or uh, we can, uh, we we believe we can uh, easily apply it uh, to the production environment or uh, in the near future. Okay, uh, now uh, Asahina will go on to explain our uh, challenges. Okay, uh, thank you, awesome. <clears throat> Again, I, I'm Hiram Asahina from NTT. Um, I am a software engineer. And uh, like he said, uh, we are trying to introduce GitOps to our um, 5G department, let's say. I, I think you see what I mean. And uh, originally, um, I didn't plan to uh, do any live demo, but uh, after watching this Cubicon, um, I think we have to try it. So. <laughs> because, like he said, we are trying to do GitOps, so maybe this is an easy as demo you ever seen. So um, we have a configuration. Maybe you see the KRM-like thing, and uh, I'm gonna change just the Kubernetes version here. Okay. Okay, so something happened behind here. <laughs> and uh, you can see the current version of the Kubernetes is uh, 1.12.4. It's a little bit too old, but uh, if it's succeeded, maybe we can see it got, will be upgraded. So I'll check it later. It's gonna take um, 30 minutes, so <laughs> maybe we'll run out of time. Okay, um, let's go back to my slide. 
Okay, like he said, uh, we, we worked for uh, OpenStack, but uh, nowadays, you know, OpenStack is a little bit too, um, it's, it's kind of legacy, and uh, we, are, we have to move on to the Kubernetes. And uh, just using Kubernetes is not important for now. How to use it is more important. And the, like he said, the answer for that question is GitOps, obviously. So we are now trying to introduce GitOps to our 5G department. And uh, what I will show today is uh, our prototype we are proposing now. Okay, so let's summarize uh, what is GitOps. I don't believe um, it's really necessary because it's KubeCon, but uh, um, I, I'd like to make every, everybody on the same page. So um, GitOps is a methodology and practice that uses Git repository as a single source of truth. And the interesting part here is a single source of truth for me. Because that means if I put everything on the Git repository, we can deploy it on the actual environment and we can reach every information we need on Git repository. So in other words, we can gather every information we need on the Git repository. That is the most interesting part for me. I'll talk to it later. And next, um, I'd like to show you um, the good example of the what we call staging environment. Um, by the way, this is the shared open lab of, provided by Docomo R&D. Um, by the way, this is not it, it's not related to us. It, this is their other department's things. I just borrow it, but uh, you know, this is a good example. So let's see. Okay, you can see the server here and the VRAM application running on that. And this server is our target, specifically um, software running inside this server is our target. Kubernetes cluster running inside there and the network function VRAM running inside there. Those things are our target. And what is the out of scope? Out of, we don't care about, um, you know, devices like smartphone or Wi-Fi router, whatever it is. And uh, are you radio station out of scope? Because it is hard to control them from Kubernetes. So not for now. So we just focusing on virtual resources. And uh, although this example just show VRAM, we support, we try to support both 5GT and VRAM. Okay. So um, this is a procedure of our staging environment. And uh, what, when I say staging environment, it's a kind of mirror of production environment. And uh, we can see two teams here. One team is in charge of creating infrastructure for testing environment. So everything, Kubernetes cluster and uh, physical things like a network. And uh, another team, testing team, in charge of running test, actual test. And if ta test, all tests has passed, it's sign that ready to promote to production environment. Sorry. And what I want to do is change it to like this, to this. Uh, I want to make this environment self-service style as possible. So meaning that the testing, if testing team want to run their test, they can create Kubernetes cluster by their own and run test from CI. Now they are doing test by hand. A part of tests are automated, but the most part are manual. So I want to change it to CI-based test. But I don't try to um, change everything at once, like he said. So um, there's, we, we accept there are some manual parts, but uh, at least we can control them through GitOps. Okay, and uh, 
here I want to share you what did I say to decision maker because maybe when you try to introduce GitOps to your de department, um, someone say, you know, is it worth enough? Is it beneficial for us? Something like that. And we were facing that problem. Um, in, in our environment, not all members are coder and they have already automated some steps by ordering you know, other companies. And uh, they may not be entirely welcoming GitOps. So when, when I talk them, GitOps is a good uh, solution to progress automation, um, they, 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 they are not interested in. So I changed my word to GitOps. Is there something improve information reachability? So our environment is now looks like this. So there are many spreadsheets and uh, artifacts are scattered all over the, our environment. We can't reach them easily. So there is some key person dependency. Only a key, specific key person know there what's where, where it is, where what, where artifact, oh sorry, uh, which artifact placed where. So I want to make it more simple by using GitOps. GitOps is not a portal, but uh, by introducing GitOps, we can do everything through Git. So our member naturally lead to the world that the GitOps is the center of the world. So. In other words, we don't need um, expensive robot that can automate a specific step. We need conveyor belt that connect each steps on single line. So let's move on to the um, how to how did I do that? Uh, how did I introduce GitOps to our staging environment? I added one thing to the images I showed previously. Um, that is the create the system design part. System design is uh, fundamental for us. This is decided at the beginning of, uh, beginning of our development process. And the uh, staging environment and the production environment should follow the design. So we have to find a way to handle those system design and uh, ha way to reflect that system design to staging environment somehow with GitOps. So the first challenge, we have two challenges and the first challenge is how to convert that 5G system design to Kubernetes cluster and network, configura network function configurations. So let's look back a little bit about the 5G system, how it looks like. It's a nationwide service, and uh, there are many edges with complex configurations like a networks placement accelerator. So we have to handle some patterns of deployment like uh, I show here. There is a pattern one, Kubernetes, one Kubernetes cluster per edge, Another pattern we have is one Kubernetes cluster per region. Region need a set of edges. So we have to handle those kind of differences and the configuration. And uh, next I'd like to show you is um, our development processes. In, this is not telc development processes. This is uh, um, what I believe usual development process in web, like a web service. Um, in any case, it happened within single organization. So you can control development team and the production team. May, maybe you not, but uh, ideally. And so you can introduce GitOps to unify their development phase and their op operating phase. But in Teleco, it's slightly different. Um, we are separated by vendor. Maybe it's a little bit wrong word choices, but the telecommunication services development is like looks like a more um, car manufacturer. I don't know it, it's um, good analogy or not, but uh, we design 
the system, but we don't make it by ourselves. Instead, we order it and buy software and the hardware from multiple vendors and assemble them, test them, operate them, and sell them, maybe, someday. So, what does that affect to us? Um, it affects us, uh, our GitOps environment, because we can't start GitOps from development process. So, instead, we have to start it from system design part, and uh, make system design and the staging environment and even production environment be consistent. So the single source of truth, when I say single source of truth, it should be system design. And the second challenge is uh, how to manage test scenario on Git service. So um, we, don't, we do regression test, of course, so it can be handled easily by CI pipeline, right? But uh, also we have complex scenario tests for specific operation, like upgrading Kubernetes cluster on the edge. So it might consist of multiple operations, multiple steps, and uh, have to be executed by, for, for specific changes. So we have to handle those two different kinds of tests on Git service. So those are challenges I just told. So let's see how we solved it. Um, this is a general architecture of our system. So let me introduce a little bit. Um, there the Flux CD, we use Flux CD to, as a GitHub CD, and we use Cluster API. Like I said, we try to make a Kubernetes cluster and the network functions at the same time. And uh, we use Helm, basically. And that, in other words, we don't use our uh, other kind of, you know, um, package system like a customization or kept package. We just use Helm because we want to reduce the options we show to our development members. And this Flux CD is syncing this repository, and this repository has ha um, Helm releases. Helm releases is a kind of Flux CD resources. Um, you can write uh, any parameters you want to give to the Helm install command or Helm upgrade command to here. And we have test. We define test as a CI job config. And this job config is templated in another repositories. So the test team can just configure their scenario on here. They can consume the predefined template from here so they can focus on their scenarios. And the one last thing I want to share by this slide is uh, abstracted helm values. This is a new thing I made and uh, what I show at the beginning of this presentation. Um, because um, Helm releases are a little bit complex for our testing members, so we abstracted it so that they can focus on the parameters they have to change. So like the templating of the CI configuration, our main uh, most important thing for us is the separation of concerns. So I did it here also. So this is the, um, I, I rephrased the, what I told here. Um, we separated a system design part from Helm releases like this. So like I said, the single source of truth for us is the system design. So we have to define it as a, you know, Kubernetes-like resources. And we can convert it to configuration by CI automatically. And the configuration is consumed by Flux automatically. So our members can just focusing on the system design part. So how it looks like? It looks like this. Um, 
it's, um, it's small, it's short, it's abstracted enough. And uh, Helm release is a little bit more complex. So there are some fields that our members don't have to care about. And uh, even Helm releases can be, um, can have a variety um, depending on the, what you bought by vendors. So we can make a construction layer to absorb that differences. Okay, so the next challenge, how to manage test scenario on Git service. Um, we don't, honestly, we don't have um, any concrete answer for that question, but uh, what we are trying now is uh, something like GitHub flow. We create branch at the beginning of test scenario and doing some operations and uh, configuration for test on that branch or pull request, merge request, so that we can find the unit of test later, easily. And after test has passed, we merge it. So it's a really simple way. And we made a rule. Rule to use, um, rule to made test, make test scenario on Git. Define CI template to enable tester to focus on test scenario. Make test branch before making a test. Do not make multiple test branch at the same time. And these rules is maybe not necessary, maybe you think so, but uh, um, we have choices. So we do, we do something, we can do something, but uh, always we have options. And uh, taking one good options from those options is a hard question for um, most of our members. So we have to make a, make a rule, even if it's not so sophisticated. Okay, um, let's go to the demo part. I think the, uh, what I did is still running on the behind it. So I show you the video first, and uh, finally I show you the result of the, what I did at the beginning of this talk. And uh, we have two scenarios in this demo. And creating, uh, first one is creating 5G system and uh, deploying Kubernetes cluster and uh, OAI network functions on that and test running test. And the second scenario is upgrading Kubernetes clusters and the see the connectivity is maintained during upgrade. We use OpenStack as an infrastructure and we use, like I said, open air interface as an workload. So this is the initial stage of this demo, and uh, we make this in one shot, and do connectivity test and stress test. So there, it is an abstraction value I showed just before. And uh, now I was trying to push that values to abstracted values repository. So it's pushed. And like I said, uh, it's automatically converted to Hermit release and promoted to um, the repository where Flux are watching. So this is the repository Flux are watching. And this is the configuration of our t test scenario. Like I said, we, are, we, were import, we imported uh, some templates from here and just configured parameters for test.
And now the Helm release has been promoted to um, our staging environment. Yeah, we did so many things here. So you can see three tests, connectivity test, and uh, it passed about the storage test. Now you can see the cluster are provisioned. And uh, we can access to the provisioned cluster by kubeconfig, automatically created by cluster API. And we can see the 5G, 5G systems are provisioning now. And all network functions are successfully deployed. And we did some tests for network connectivity and doing storage test after that. And it's passed. And uh, like ordinary uh, CI setup, we can access to the test artifact easily. Oh. And uh, it's a dummy, but uh, we make uh, you know CI job to prom promote our staging environment to production environment. And like I said, if the test has passed, we merge it. So this is this is the first scenario. Let me show you the second one. So now we are trying to upgrade edges. And uh, let me explain a little bit more. Um, what we are trying to do is a little bit complex test. When we try to upgrade edges, we make a plan ordinarily. We make a plan like uh, upgrading one edge and uh, try to watch the another edge that is running um, running in the same area and so that connectivity for users is maintained. So we are trying to automate that here. See, so keep watching the another edge spots can be connected to um, the 5 gc 5CC. So I think we are running out of time. We speed update. So again, I updated um, abstracted values. So it's pretty easy and uh, co automatically converted to hammer release, just like I showed before. and propagate, promote it to staging environment. And another test is automatically triggered here. Like I said, um, there are some specific, some tests which is specific for, uh, sorry, which is um, created for specific operation, like this one. So like I said, uh, we are trying to keep watching the connectivity from adjacent edges so that service is not going down. And the old job are succeeded. And do the same thing for another edge. So it's almost the same, just upgrading the edge two in the same way. So
So the same test has run, and it succeeded. So we can promote the change, each changes uh, to the production production environment step by step. And we can access to the artifact, of course. OK, that's it. So um, let's summarize the what I told in this talk a little bit. Um, like I said, our environment, in our environment, not all member coders and not all steps can be automated at once. So need to make design and uh, configuration and the uh, co configuration con be consistent. So, uh, sorry, um, I didn't know that. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I don't know if this suggestion works for you, but uh, for in what we want is uh, make an extensive place for future automation first, not try to do automation in everything, and to separate concerns through abstraction and templates can be uh, um, good choices to start this kind of thing and use OSSs to keep maintainability and avoid key person dependency. So lastly, um, let's see what happens in the actual environment. So the, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I forgot to promote it to the actual environment, so <laughs> I missed it. So. But uh, at least I can show you the, you know, the change is automatically propagated. To here, so it's what you saw in my video, so it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> And uh, after merging it, I believe it started to work. <laughs> so it's gonna be one twelve five. <laughs> so tw sorry, one twenty five. So unfortunately, we can't see the end of this demo. It take thirty minutes. <laughs> but, uh, so maybe you can see, um, get some clue for from here. Okay. Okay. Thank you for listening.